Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, as you can see, it's ROS2 on Fedora. Uh, just to begin the talk, I, I think since you're all in this talk, I, are you, are, you are aware what is ROS uh, in the context of robotics? Anyone is aware of ROS? I am not. Okay, cool. That's what I expect and that's what I'm planning to do educate everyone on what's ROS and what we are doing on Fedora. So ROS is a robotic operating system, uh, OS which is designed mainly for robots. We call it OS, but it's not exactly a OS. It's a messaging protocol. Uh, it does something more than that, which I'm not aware of. I'm not a ROS expert. So my journey in ROS starts from me as a kid who is interested in robotics, trying to teach kids what is robotics, what is electronics, what is Arduino. Uh, I hope people are aware of Arduino more than ROS. Uh, so I get the questions from those kids like, we have ChatGPT and those LLMs which, which know many things about ROS or anything in the world. Why should I ask you? So for that context, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Shyan Paul, and I am a senior software engineer in Red Hat, working mainly on Fedora IoT, Rivos, and Rivos is basically an OS for a vehicle. And apart from that, I do robotics, like small projects. I design PCBs for fun, and this is me when I'm not doing anything, trying to take crazy pictures. So moving on to how I'm going to uh, flow this, or what the flow of this talk would be. It is like, what is ROS2? Why we want to do ROS2 on Fedora? And how we, to, how we want to do it? What's next? Some takeaways and some questions. So basically, uh, I'm not going to bore everyone with ROS because the talk is not exactly on ROS, but on how ROS is implemented on Fedora. So before that, we just want to talk why we need ROS. Uh, basically, we see the evolution in technology, be it sensor technology, be in the communication protocol, uh, as well as fabrication, the sizes like NVIDIA is, like they are defining Moore's law now. So they are defined, defining Moore's law. So some of the some of the key points like the sensor has been miniaturized to a small level like MEMS which is micro technology then come NEMS which is nanotechnology and there is quantum sensors which is coming now and also the technology communication protocols they are changing from now we know I2C protocol is a very standard protocol but things are changing from I2C to I3C which is a more advanced protocol faster and can address a lot of devices uh, apart from that, we have seen PCI technology changing. We have Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5. Uh, those are the hardware changes. And apart from that, on software level, there are things like zero touch deployment. You don't need any sort of physical interaction with the device to deploy any software or even the operating system on the device. And another is the immutable OS. Immutable OS is kind of a buzzword in this edge industry because it's, it gives enhanced security and it does, uh, you know, it has more security just to say. Uh, so apart from that, from industry is moving from 1.0 to 4.0. So uh, with current things as 4.0, basically we are doing, having AI's, AI implementation, big data, and that is getting reflected into hardware industry from manufacturing to, uh, to manufacturing, to process pipelines, so all that. So this is basically what the technology is evolving. Now coming to why we need ROS on Fedora. First of all, it's fun to have ROS. <laughs> so having that ROS, uh, I'll, I'll talk about what, why, we need, uh, why we need that, the problem statement. So there are lack of installation processes in Fedora, like if you try to install ROS on Fedora, it's pretty painful. 
like there are some RPMs, but have to install the dependencies and all. It's pretty painful. Uh, handling the stack, like since we are doing things on edge, handling the OS stack, the application and its dependency is being cumbersome. Uh, I've, seen, I've written easy deployment, but it's not easy. It's actually the problem. I should have changed that, but uh, the deployment is not that easy. And future developments, uh, which should be actually feature development. So I've written it in red because it's the future thing that I'm looking into. I'll come back, I'm, I'll come to what's in the future. So how we are going to do it, like it's not the technical, just an approach that we take uh, initially. It's like create, how we do it, we need a OS which has ROS inbuilt in it. What it does, it does get things easy for robotics engineer, like robotics engineer don't want to do the Linux administration stuff. They want to do the robotic stuff. So we should give them a foundation where they can do things quickly. Uh, making it scalable, that's like one of the industrial aspect of it. Uh, customization, I think that's also uh, like a, has a wide spectrum because robotics is not doing or running just a car, robots is everywhere and they have a lot of different use cases than, uh, you know, a lot of different use cases that one can imagine of. Um, easy deployment, upgrade, bulletproof for edge applications, so these are the features that we need in an OS with ROS so that it becomes easily adaptable for all of our users. Now I come to how we do it. So just to say we are going to build a container that has ROS in it. Uh, so if you see it's written Fedora Bootsy base image. So, Fedora Bootsy base image is basically an base of, uh, is an image, Bootsy image, which you can just boot. So it's a new technology, and I'm sure uh, you will be hearing a lot about it. And you know, there are people uh, which are working on it, and it's, it's kind of a buzz thing that we have right now. So the approach is we'll be putting ROS on that base image, and we'll be creating a container image that has ROS in it. So we have a container that has ROS in it. We can boot it and run it, and it, it, will, be, it will be like just using uh, Podman run, where we can run those, uh, use that image. But if you want to distribute it, like in cases we need scalability, we need to distribute it. So we have another image builder that is a Boots image builder, and when you use that container, that ROS container, have your configs done and use Bootsy Image Builder, you can create multiple deployable images having ROS. How we are going to do it, I'll show it, but this is just an, uh, the pictorial representation of what has been done. So the thing is, we have those base image running but we need to add our stuff. As a robotics engineer, I need to add my stuff. So how we do that? Uh, it's simple. It's just a container. And we can use the standard container commands to incorporate my, your changes or my changes, no, whatever uh, we want. So we can use those, no, just, a, just a representation of what we can do. We can uh, use this ROS. Uh, image. So the ROS image basically what I've created and pushed it in Quay for people to use. So this is the base Fedora 40 boot Im, uh, ROS image and you can add your thing and run anything uh, that a container supports. So I'm, this is the takeaway basically and I'm going to show you uh, what uh, you can do it, it's like the commands and what exactly can be done, uh, how you can create your image. So I'm just going to show this. Is it visible or I can just, okay. Okay, so this is the Quay image and basically the takeaway for uh, this talk is this repository where you can download this container image and run ROS out of, out of box. So 
uh, what I said that we you can create the image that has been already done. You can how can you create a de deployable image out of it? So it's basically you have a config that I've shown in the picture. So config is basically you add a toml file and it has the user configuration, the you know the name and the password and you, there are multiple customizations that is available in the image builder. So you can add this basic configuration and you can actually use podman run to create the image out of it. So this is the command and it uses bootc image builder. So this is the command that I've exactly taken from uh, bootc image builder. I have added bit of my customization and this is the ROS bootc image that has been created and that you can pull from this square repository. So once you run this, it creates a QCAL and this QCAL has, you can deploy it to any system. Currently for like demo purpose, you can use VM to run that image and if you, if you, if you are familiar with ROS, then you can do this basic demo like uh, you can source the ROS uh, setup and run the ROS demo. So this, uh, uh, this is what you can do like uh, when, when you boot an image uh, and run this uh, command. I can, uh, what I can do is I can just uh, show what is there. Okay. Apart from that, I'm going to go back to the presentation. So, yeah. yeah. So, looking into the future, so what future holds for us and what we need to do as a part of this development, there are more images for ROS that is present uh, that needs to be developed. Like if you if you're familiar with ROS, ROS has many versions from Neotic to Humble, there are Foxy, there are rolling. So rolling is next in the pipeline which we want to do because rolling is for developers and it helps for new package creation. Uh, currently when we create the image, it's a bit big. So we need to find uh, ways to reduce the image size as well as we need some of the additional things like when you have ROS, you need to be able to deploy ROS packages. So ROS packages, it, it is a container what I said and you can deploy ROS packages with like Git and anything like running those commands in container. But we want to streamline that process so that package develop, deployment and configurability become easy. And that's it. I would like to have uh, more questions like how we are, uh, what, what, what do you think, what are the, uh, what are the key problems or the th uh, scope that you want, but if, if you want uh, the scope for it, the scope is endless, uh, you can deploy, create, uh, like I created a basically ESP32 mod node which can run ROS out of the box and you can control a smart car out of it, but yeah. That's it. Uh, any questions on this? Yes, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. So it's currently around 5.7 GB. So the size of the base image with Fedora in it. So it's around 5.7 GB. And uh, I have done some optimization to come down to 5 GB, but on edge cases, we need something around 700 to 800 MB for base image. And on top of it, uh, with ROS, the base ROS, like this, the ROS I have installed is a pretty big installation with all those examples and demos. So cutting down that, it comes to around 2 GB. So that's the goal, like we want to keep I want to push it down to around 1.5 to 1.7 GB and yeah. You're pushing down 
just to confirm, you want to push it down because it will be a OS3 file system and you don't want to dump 5 gigs for each and every upgrade. Yes, yes, exactly. So, uh, because we are going to up update it, uh, so the question I think is we want to push down the size because we don't want the updates to be big. So, yeah, we want to push down the size to that bit because it, uh, we are targeting mainly for edge cases and for edge cases, the lower the size, the lower it's better. Apart from that, uh, there are also a few things that uh, we need to incorporate as a part of uh, this image, is specifically the rollbacks and the uh, health checks. So we have Green Boot that is pre-installed in Fedora. So with Boot C, there are few issues with Green Boot that we want to address so that we are able to roll back properly. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, uh, we are looking forward to make it more of a complete solution for all the uh, robotics or ROS enthusiasts. Any further questions? Nobody are going to ask. Yeah. Can you go back to Quay page a bit? Quay page? Yeah, Quay page. Okay. I'm just using chance to learn. Man. Yeah. Did, like, scroll up and down a bit, build one. So the image when you're running to dirt install, that image was produced by the Bodman build, like bit down. Yeah, the this. Yes. So that that image is basically built using Image Builder. So if you see the command, uh, it's using Image Builder. Yeah, and it produces that. Oh, the type of the above is produced. Yeah, it's type is, is QCal, so we can have ISO. We can have, uh, I think, PDKs also. But I mostly have played with QCal yeah. currently because we are having, when I was developing, trying to develop the image, uh, it was having problem with Fedora Bootsy. And uh, if, you, if, if I'm going to show you just the container repo. So... Okay, so if, you, if, if I go to the container repo, you will see I'm using Fedora Bootsy 40 base image that I've shown. I'm using the ROS version Iron. So Iron is currently the stable version of ROS, which I'm using. And on that, I'm installing all those dependencies that is required to build ROS on the image. Uh, I'm not trying to download the RPM. Uh, they, there has been an RPM recently, but that's quite flaky, and it doesn't work in Fedora. It does work on CentOS, but I'm not sure why it doesn't work on Fedora. So I have downloaded those uh, creators, downloaded those dependencies, uh, have and built ROS from base up so that we can be sure that we have all the ROS packages installed as well as it has those call con part because once we need to build new packages on ROS, we need the call con as well as catkin. Uh, so these are also there. And this actually creates the base image. So this is what uh, I, I can just run podman uh, run podman create and I can create the uh, container and push it to Quay. So, Yeah. They're not going to shrink the Yeah, they're adding layers. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, this is currently in like WIP model. Uh, I just wanted to make sure everything runs and so that it's easy for people to get run up and running quite quickly. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'm looking for the optimization too. Um, coming back to it, so, yeah, so any further questions? No? Nope. Then that's all for the talk. <laughs>